Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old living, neither with the living of malice and wickedness, but with the unliving bread of what? Sincerity. Praise God. Praise God. So, but with the unliving bread of sincerity and a truth. It now says that I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators. I don't know if somebody is with another, if you are with, um, if, if you're, you can just type, if you're with another uh, version of the Bible, because I will still need another version to, so that we, we demystify something here by the Spirit of God, you know. So if you're with another this thing, uh, you just keep it one side, because it will still be needed. Okay. So it now says that if any man, sorry, it now says, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not all together with the fornicators of the world, of this world, or with the covetous or extortioners or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or drunkard or an extortioner or extortioner with such as one, know not to eat. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> now, he now says in verse 12, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge that are within, but them that are without God's God judge it. Therefore, put away from among yourself that wicked person. Paul, what are you trying to say here? God will bless the reading of his word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> no wonder somebody like Peter said, the things this man say, it is very hard to understand. <laughs> so Peter had to recognize the grace of God in the life of this man called Paul because the things he's saying, is um is mysterious how do you speak like that <laughs> but you know one thing i've understood about paul this man is coming from a high level he's walking in a high level in the realm of the spirit he's not just walking on just a low level paul is walking in one of the highest levels of graces that's why we can't understand him He's walking in because there are there are different dimensions of graces in which men get into. There is a dimension of grace you get into. There are some certain things you cannot do. That's why when some people do some certain things, you begin to wonder, can a Christian do this? Now, it's not that we all don't sin, you know. But what I mean is that there is a dimension you get to. There are some, there are some things you can't do. When I mean some things you can't do, there are some wickedness you can't do. You, you can't cheat people. It's not because you don't, but it's like you, you've, you, you've gone above that realm. There are other things the devil might bring to you, but there are some things you can't do. Can you imagine Jesus? Because Jesus was very matured in the spirit he already knew what judas iscariot was doing but you see what jesus did even at that last supper jesus still came there served everybody food he knew he knew that this person was a big problem in his ministry but because of his high level of understanding he dealt with every man with wisdom and with love but now let's go here to where we have read. First and foremost, 
The Bible says that there are some certain things that should not be among you as Gentiles. Maybe among the Jews, I don't know. Maybe it was among them. They were doing it. But because, you know, we are the Gentile nation today, right? He said it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as it not as much as named among the Gentiles. You see, let me tell you the truth. I'm not doing more than what I, I will not, I don't, the Bible says that a student or a disciple is not better than his master. Don't think I want to be better than Jesus. When I mean better than Jesus, I cannot be better than, he's my master. If I'm also following the apostle Paul, I don't think like I'm just going to be better than him. No, he's my master. He's my, he's my, he's, he's a forerunner because Paul says, follow me, say, follow me. Because I follow Jesus. You follow me now. When I look at Paul, I say, this is a good person I can follow. So now, anything I see in the life of Jesus, I might not see some certain things directly in the life of Jesus. I go to Paul. Just like a ministry. Jesus, Jesus had a function to do. But Jesus was not like going around planting churches like a pastor, like an apostle. When I want to learn something, I go to Paul. I look at Paul. How, how, how did Paul, how did he deal with the churches? How did he do this? And you know what I realized? Paul is a father. A father disciplines. A father what? He disciplines. Any father that doesn't discipline is a bad father. A father disciplines. He puts the right measures to help the children to grow. And this thing we we'll call fatherhood is not, it's a spirit thing. It's not because somebody is aged or experienced or so much of this thing, but it's a spirit thing. It's a mind, it's a mindset. It's a compassionate spirit. Why am I saying that? Is that you don't see evil and smile at evil and say, come on, evil, continue. <laughs> no, 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 you don't do that. Because in the end, you will be judged. You will be judged. Everything you do, when it comes to ministry, ministry, that's why in the next series, I will be teaching us on certain things on ministry. I called a sister yesterday, one of us, as it was laid in my heart. I said, sister, do you know you have a prophetic anointing? I want this prophetic gift to be used. Because I've come to realize, see, I want to be able to see how everybody in REM, that is my next mission now. I want to be able to see how everybody can magnify their ministry. When I mean magnify your ministry, I don't mean going to open a church or going to this thing. There's a lot of things people do and the spirit of God is not even approving it. Anybody can do what they want to do. Anybody can start something because of self or because of this and because of that. And sometimes, you know, if there is no apostolic guidance in what they do, many times they end. Sometimes it's very funny. There are times people have come to me and say, Pastor, what did you do? Did you say anything to this person? Why is this thing shaking? Why is this person's life moving like this? Why is everything she's doing is being distressed? I didn't do anything. I just left this person to do what she wants to do. I just left her. I, I know. That's, what, that's my life. I just leave you. I pull my hands spiritually and physically. So I leave you. So that I leave you to the Lord. Let the Lord now take charge of you. That's how I do. That's how I behave. I just leave you to the Lord. But the funny thing is that in years to come, people come to me and say, Pastor, we are sorry. Pastor, we are sorry. I say, this is medicine after death. You know, there's nothing I can do here. If you say you're sorry, I don't have anything. I just say, God bless you. God bless you. In eternity, you don't have me. I'm not the judge. In eternity, you go back to the judge and you answer to the judge. Let me tell you a secret. What I've realized is that if you do anything that makes a pastor, a man of God to cry, God in his infinite mercy is watching from heaven. You see, it's not just a pastor. For example, if I do something that makes Sister Rose as Hanji to cry, she says, oh, and she's crying because of what I did. You see, God is very careful with his disciples or a righteous man. As long as it is because of you that person is suffering or is crying 
or is asking God questions. God from the heavenly world will look down. What is making this my servant to behave like this? Why is this thing happening? When God traces it and knows where the problem is coming from, God himself disciplines. Now, I'm trying to make us understand how things are being done in the church and how Paul related with immorality. Let me tell you, if somebody says it's, it's all lies, if somebody tells you in our church, everybody is perfect. <laughs> we are all angels in heaven. In this church. The person is a liar. The person lied to you. That's not true. Because church is made up of different kinds of personalities. I hope you get that. You know, there's you that in, in our church, oh, there's no liar here, there's no gossip. <laughs> I doubt if that's a church. It's not normal. You know why? Jesus' ministry, can you imagine a perfect God had a 12 people in his ministry? Do you know that they were not all perfect? Out of 12, Jesus possibly had like 80%. Of people that were with him. What do you realize there? Even you yourself, you can't build a perfect ministry. You need the spirit of God now to help. Even Jesus' ministry. Can you imagine? Jesus preaching every day. You are with the mighty God, the son of God, and somebody still did something in the midst. Because there are times some people have spoke to me, Pastor, why did this thing happen? And then you are there. Why did this? <laughs> I'm not God. <laughs> It's only God that watches over. I am just a human being. I do my own part. I preach the gospel and I leave God to do what he wants to do. Because even in the ministry of Jesus Christ, there were a whole lot of things. That's why Jesus was always praying. Pray that they should be one. Pray that they should be one. Even after Jesus left, they were still arguing who is the head. Even before he left, they were still arguing. You'll be asking yourself, but are these people with Jesus at all? No, no, no. Peter said, I'm the one. This one says, I'm the one. And that one says, I'm the one. And they are just struggling. But what I want us to understand here is that, that there is a way to deal with things in the church. That's why we must not be overtaken. Now it says, and ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned. You see, now the important thing here is not about sin. Listen carefully. Now, the important thing is not about whether you sin or not. Is there any of you that have not sinned here before? All of us are all sin. We have sinned. We are not sinners. I made an article. Somebody say, are you not a sinner? I'm not a sinner. You don't, you don't put me and say, I am a sinner. You don't, you don't go and trash on the work of grace and the blood of Jesus Christ. I am a sinner saved by grace, by blood. I am washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, I stumble, but I am not a sinner. A Christian is not a sinner. A born-again Christian is not a sinner. He cannot enjoy sin. He cannot live in sin. He cannot continue sin. No, it doesn't work that way. You must understand the word of God to know who you really are. Because if you don't know who you really are, the devil plays with you. The devil plays with a Christian that doesn't understand the word. So the Christian is carried away by emotions. He's carried away by emotions. Look at what Paul says. And I, I know that everybody agrees that Paul is a spiritual man. I know everybody agrees that, you know. He says, and he are puffed up and have no rather money. The first thing when you sin against God, if you have the Holy Spirit, is the spirit of money. You begin to weep, oh Lord, why did I do this, oh Lord, why did I do this? You begin to cry. It's a sign that the Holy Spirit is present. If there is no mourning and there is no crying and you are enjoying it, you say, come on, I like this thing, I like this thing, I like this thing. It's a sign spiritually that this person doesn't have born again experience. I've seen all these things like this in ministry. That's what Paul says here. He says that, why are you puffed up? You did something bad. Why are you puffed up? Why, are you, why don't you want to humble yourself? And I have not rather mourned. Why are you not mourning? Why are you not mourning? A true child of God will not see sin and just be laughing and say, <laughs> sin, sin is good. Sin is beautiful. <laughs> no, no, no. True child of God will mourn in his heart. He will cry in his heart for grace. And and then the true child of God will take every step to follow the right path. 
Now look at Paul, and that's why I'm always praying to God for something. One of my key prayers is wisdom. Because human beings are the most difficult people to really, to really put through. Very, very, it takes time. It takes time. It takes time for people to grow. It takes time for people to mature. It takes time for people to understand the right things to do at the right time. It takes time for people to not walk by soulish activity. You know, you can be a soulish person thinking you're a spiritual person. Let me tell you how a soulish person behaves. A soulish person is carried away by emotions. Ah, I pity you, child. Oh, why did they do this thing like this? That's a soulish person. <laughs> the soulish person is not walking by the spirit, but he's walking by his soulish man and emotion. A soulish man will have the enter into the kingdom of God. A soulish man is like, is like, for example, he's not looking at the details, the reason why things have been on. He, he, because the person is not mature, so he's carried away by, <laughs> you know, mostly women, women cry so much. And if, if, if care is not taken, you'll be carried away. I've tried to settle cases and then the woman cries and cries. And then when I look into the problem very well, and I thank God for God help me, I've almost pitied this woman and said, oh, no, why is this woman suffering like this? Why am I? But when I check the problem, when I check the problem, I realize this, you are a problem here. It's not just the man, you are a problem. You are a problem because you have bad character. You don't know how to speak to that man. And then the man is saying, sir, this woman doesn't do anything at home. She doesn't do this. She doesn't sweep. She doesn't, go. I say, eh, our sister cannot do this. You see, don't judge without understanding the totality. You don't just judge things like that. So I learned that I don't just want to listen to one party. I want to listen to both parties and understand. Because somebody can be speaking and he's speaking based on emotions. Now let's get to what Paul is saying here again. He now says, for verily as absent in the body, but present in the spirit. Are you seeing this is a spiritual man? He's not present with them, but he understands what is happening. He understands what is happening. This is not a judgment of, you know, there is a judgment of, you know, using your mind. This man is spiritual. Possibly God would have been speaking to Paul. He says, and I've judged already as though as I were present, I were present, I were present, consigning him that has done so this deed. Let me tell you something. Let me give you a secret. If somebody doesn't have the apostolic calling or the pastoral ministry, these are the two sets of people that God gives exceeding grace to pioneer a work of ministry or a church. When it is the other way around, there is always problem. Why? Because there is a grace. Like Paul carries a grace here. The grace he carries here is an apostolic calling is there to set things right. To put things in the normal place where they are. In short, it is being said that when Jesus Christ left, the, the next people he handed over the church to is the apostles. The next people. Now we have different kinds of apostles, which I will not be able to explain. We have the foundational apostles. You can't be like them. No matter how hard you try, <laughs> you can't be like them. I can't be like them. They are foundational. When, when we say foundational, God used them to pioneer the totality of the work. That's why Paul says, there is no other foundation except the foundation of Christ. As in, there is no other foundation we can build on <laughs> except the one that Christ has built on. There's nothing like, I'm only building on what the Lord Jesus has done through the apostles. I'm not doing a new thing, and I don't want to do a new thing because that's how error comes in. This thing we call error starts gradually. Are we hearing that? Error doesn't start at once. So error starts gradually. Gradually. You not realize you are in error until time has passed. Then you look and say, come on, a big mistake. You don't make mistakes in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He now says that, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together, my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such one, to deliver 
such one to deliver such and one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. When we see an immoral person in the church, what do we do? What do we do? Paul says, deliver this person to Satan. You know what Paul is saying? Discipline this person. Are we getting that? What is Paul saying again? Discipline this person. Discipline this person. Praise the Lord. I, I accept from me using REM Worldwide. I don't want to see any other person. You can edit, edit your name there. And let me know those that are here. You know. Let me know those that are here. Paul says that there are people that, I'm just quoting Paul. Paul says there are people that come to spy on our liberty. They come to spy on our liberty. You see, nothing is new. Everything started in the, in the, everything started in the Bible. Why? 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 Because we must be very now careful. Everything the devil seems to do is, how can we, how can we do this? How can we, how can we stop this? And how can we stop that? But we must be very wise here. So look at that. It says that deliver such one. What it means here is discipline. Discipline this person so that the the, it says here, look at that, destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus. If you don't discipline this person, the person will grow to be a rebel in the kingdom of God. And it will cause a generational problem. It says discipline, discipline this person. Deliver the person. Let the devil punish the person. That's, that's another word for what Paul is saying here. I hope you understand that. Let the devil punish this person so that this person will understand. So that this person will know that this thing is wrong. Discipline. Do you know that Satan is a messenger too of, of the Lord? I hope you know that if you read scriptures very well. God uses him to achieve a purpose. Discipline. So he says that so that the person will be disciplined. But now you see, another thing again is that it is only a mature believer that can accept discipline. I repeat, it is only a mature believer that can accept discipline because the believer that is not mature will not know that it is for his or her own good. People will say, ah, Paul is wicked. Pastor, you are wicked. Why? Show mercy now. God is a merciful God. God is a merciful God. But look at what the Bible says. <laughs> because things need to be put in other limits. This is how the church grows. This is how the church grows. If not, we are going to have a race of people that fear not the Lord. That is why a lot of evil things happening in the churches today. Immorality taking place. Pastors sleeping with members of the church. See, it's happening like that, you know. We have heard of cases and cases and cases. A lot of things happening. We have seen that even amongst us. We have seen a lot of things like this. Then we put the measures so that you can be saved. Do you know that when there is an immoral person in the midst of the church, do you know it destroys your prayer point? Do you know? You create battles for yourself. Praise God. God. Praise God. Praise God. I hope we can hear me. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I, I hope we can hear me. Hallelujah, yes. Okay, okay. So what am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? These are structures that are being put in place for the edification of the church. It now says that your glory is not good. No, ye not. You don't glory in sin. That's what Paul is saying. I think one thing about the Corinthians church is that the Corinthians church always feel that they are spiritual. So maybe they are glory in it. What's there, Paul? What's there if we commit this thing? Paul, what are you saying? What's there? And maybe they are glory in it. You know, Paul is saying, you don't glory in this thing. A little living, living is the whole lump. It spoils everything. Some of you have cooked soup before, right? If you use something that is spoiled and put inside of the soup, what will happen? You even want to throw the soup away. Try it. <laughs> maybe you use something that is bad or, I don't know, maybe. 
<laughs> I've made that mistake before, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, what kind of soup is this? I thought it was uh, it was salt, and I put sugar. <laughs> but I've not done that mistake again. <laughs> You know, and then I was like, I tasted it. I said, oh my God, was, this thing is sugar. <laughs> and I didn't like myself again. <laughs> so because I was, I was busy doing a lot of things at the same time. So what am I trying to say? You won't enjoy the soup again. You won't enjoy the food again. I used to something little. It spoils everything. It spoils everything. It spoils everything. You don't joke with sin, my beloved. You don't see your husband sinning against God, doing the wrong thing. You suffer. You say, "Sir, this is my husband. Oh, leave him now. Let him sin. <laughs> you are killing yourself." That lion or that dog you fail to curtail will still eat you up if you don't curtail it now. If your child, you don't discipline your child, you say, "Leave her now. She's still a baby." You say, ah, "Sir, let's leave him alone. Let's leave her." They are still children, no problem. They will grow. When they grow, they will not be children anymore. And the devil will still use them against you. You see, this life, this life is this. Whatever a man sows is what he reaps. Don't deceive yourself. What you sow is what you reap. What you sow is what you reap. If you sow in the flesh, you will reap in the flesh. Sow in the spirit, you reap in the spirit. If you sow in hypocrisy, you reap hypocrisy. That's life. If you try to use a back door to do some certain things, it doesn't come out with good results. Because there is a way of doing things. So now, Paul says, watch out there for the old living. What is he saying? Purge it out. Discipline it. Check it up. Purge it out. Let it pass through the refiner furnace. Let it pass through the fire. Let it pass through the growth process. This is how we grow as believers. I tell people, gone are those days. If I see a gifted person, no matter how gifted you are, I am not moved. It doesn't shake me anymore. Gone are those days, I will be shaken, you know. But of recent, as I grow in the Lord, I don't get moved. Okay, you're gifted. That's good. Come, learn. You still have to learn. If you come to a church like us and then you know, I don't, I'm not moved by somebody's praying. <laughs> no, because for me, that's not maturity. Maturity is not praying. Maturity is not prophesying. That's not maturity. Maturity is not being gifted. That's not maturity. You must understand what true maturity is all about. Maturity is not in all these things. Maturity is not that I have charisma. Maturity is not money. That's not maturity. Maturity is not being a leader. That's not maturity. Maturity is not I'm a pastor, I'm a this, I'm a that. No, that's not maturity. Is not even that I'm an overseer. That's not maturity. No, 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 no. That's not maturity. You know what maturity is? Maturity is Christ likeness. Christ likeness. Christ likeness. Christ likeness. Christ likeness. You know I'm saying it because to know who a matured believer is. The person is walking like the Lord. For example, a mature believer, eh, he will hardly want to do something that will bring a reproach to the name of the kingdom. A mature believer will not want to do something that will bring offenses or something like that. See, a mature believer, for example, even if you are the one that steps on his toe, a mature believer will still come to you and say, no, sorry. A mature believer has grown in the spirit. He's mindful and careful. He deals with his or herself or deals with others like he wants to be dealt with or she wants to be dealt with. Are you understanding? Because maturity is very important in the kingdom. Maturity is very important. If a blind leads the blind, where do they all end up? They all end up into the ditch. Do you know that I can be prophesying right now and I'm not prophesying with the spirit of God? Do you know? Don't be carried away by like, I'm prophesying. No, no, no. What you should be watching out for is the fruit. If somebody prophesies with the spirit of hypocrisy, malice, gossip, and all these things, 
You think it's the spirit of God? No, it's not the spirit of God. A spirit has taken over. But a believer that is not mature is carried away. I say, <laughs> he's carried away. Carried away. No, you don't have to be carried away. Grow in grace. And this is what Paul says here. He says, Porch out there for the old living. That ye may be a new lump, as ye alone living for Christ and our Passover is sacrificed for us. We've been talking about marriage, marriage, and marriage, and all that, and all that, you know. But you see, these little, little errors can hamper the union. <clears throat> Immorality is a dangerous spirit. Trust me. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous spirit. And I've come to realize that <laughs> you, you, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't appear in the face. Somebody can be like this. <laughs> oh, like holy living. And you think all those things are all outward holiness. It's those days I used to be moved when I say believer. The person ties this and covers ear, covers the mouth and covers nose and covers and say, wow, this person is going to heaven. <laughs> but he said today, I don't get moved. And when I say, I say, well, it's part of it. It's a part of it, but that's not all of it. Because somebody can do that and then the person is still living in sin. The person is still living in sin. I've seen people give me prophecy. Say, sir, 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 look at this thing. The prophecy looks as if it's right, too. Sir, sir, look at this thing like this, like this, like this, like this. Like this. But the person is living in sin. And you come to give me prophecy. Sister, stop living in sin. Don't give me prophecy. Keep your prophecy to yourself. I don't need your prophecy. Brother, stop living in sin. Keep your prophecy to yourself. I've seen that in those. They come to me and Say, sa, 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 but living in sin. A particular prophet approached one of my friends, a brother, you know, I call him a brother because I know that I see the Christ likeness in him, you know. And then the man came to him and was prophesying to him, see you, 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 God said this, God said that, that you should do this, you should do that. You know what the brother did? <laughs> the brother said, yes, sir. But God is also speaking to me that you should stop living in sin. <laughs> and the prophet looked like this. And it was true. Are you seeing? Don't be carried away by the gifts. Be carried away by the fruits that proceeds from it. Be carried away by the fruits. When you see some certain things, see, as a believer... There are things that you will know that it is not right. The spirit of the Lord will be ministering to you. But some of us will say it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't, it matters, it matters. It really matters. It really matters. I've seen people die, and sometimes I know why, why this might happen. Because you see, when you don't want to walk by the scriptures, when you don't want to walk by setup of rules laid down in the word of God, you see the devil, the devil is very wise. He knows what to do to you. He will come softly. He will come softly. I've seen people and, oh, they say, oh, God is calling you to do this, God is calling you to do that. And then the way they do it, they approach. I know of somebody that died and then Sometimes the way this person will speak on another genuine servant of God and say, oh, this man doesn't want me to do this. I say, ah, that's a man of God. Why do you speak like that? <laughs> you put yourself in danger. Why don't you take it to the Lord? This man is doing what he's doing because he's trying to put things in place. He's helping you to. He's doing it for the growth of the church. And that's what Apostle was doing here, Paul. He now says that, therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old living. He now says that with the living of malice and wickedness, but with the unliving bread of sincerity and truth. 
Are you seeing that? I wrote unto you in the epistle, not to company with the fornicators. <laughs> Paul, what are you saying? <laughs> what is Paul saying? Have you read in the place of scripture where the Bible says that if somebody does not bring to you this message of life that will preach to you, don't be the person fear well. Don't even shake hands with the person. How many persons have read that place in scripture? It's high time that we read the word and we understand the spirit behind the word of God. The spirit. What is Paul trying to say? What Paul is trying to tell you when he says a company with fornicators, he says, you be careful. There is a spirit that hovers around. There's a spirit that hovers around. If the head of a church is a divorcee, most of his members will become divorcee. Do you know? If the head of a church is a rebel, other of the people that are drinking of the wine of the message becomes rebels. If the head of the church is a fornicator, he has one woman in his house and oh, he just comes to you and be preaching and say, come on, Jesus is Lord. He has one woman in his house. Oh my God. It will happen because there is something about the anointing, okay? You drink out of the, the glory and what God has put in a man's life. But because we don't understand these things. That's why God wants to build the minister. There is training. There's a place for training. God wants to build the minister. I always say this, that I was excommunicated because of my revelation. They said to me, choose between your revelations and choose between the church. I say, I went to God in prayer. I say, God, I love, <laughs> you don't understand. I'm this kind of person, wherever I find myself, you will even be thinking maybe I'm the pastor <laughs> because I give him my best. I give him my best. I give him my money. If, if in the church, the pastor says, <laughs> we want to do something like this in the church. You don't, <laughs> oh God, 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 God help the church. I don't see the pastor speaking again. I see that an angel is the one speaking. When the pastor says, oh, I have a burden. The Lord is laying in our heart that we want to do so, so, and so, so, and so, so, and so, so. I don't see the pastor. What do I see? I see an angel speaking in front of the pastor. Because those days when I'm in the church, I don't see if that's how, that's the way God engraced me and gifted me. Once you're preaching on the pulpit, I can see what you are. I see things happening on the pulpit. I see the angels there. I see who the man of God is. If he's living in sin, I know. In short, I begin to keep my mouth shut because I say, God, how can I be seeing things about people in the church like this? How can I be seeing things? Sometimes after the church service, I go and give a message, see what I see. I didn't know that that's how the prophetic anointing because I used to think maybe, maybe I have a problem. Maybe because people say, maybe you have, you have malaria, you're sick. Why do you see revelations like this? You know, you can't be seen. Somebody said you can't even be seeing revelations more than the Isaiah and Jeremiah. No, your revelations are too much. No, you should leave it. So I said, okay, maybe you, maybe I have a problem too. <laughs> because I, I, I was not matured. I don't have the word. I was not matured in the word. But when finally they said to me, and they said, we'll put you in jail. We'll put you in jail if you don't do this. You can imagine. I'm a young believer. Just one year, two years old in the kingdom. What do I know? I'm still a baby. And then I was crying. I cried to the Lord. I said, God, what am I going to do here? And then I heard the voice. It is better to obey God rather than to obey man. Then I was called. I went. I humbled myself and went to the lead of the church and the Asian pastor of the church. And he said to me, you have a call. I thought that you wanted to, you see, sometimes God knows how to make your enemies to be at peace with you. But if you rush, you kill your glory. You kill the destiny. You kill the great thing that God has in your life. And you know what he said to me? I thought this is someone that was threatening to put me in jail. I said to me, he looked at me. He said, come, let me see your video. Let me see that your testimony. I said, God, what do I do? Maybe if I give this man, I would see it. He watched some parts. I don't know how God did it. He looked at me. <laughs> Say, you have a call. There is something about you. Say, kneel down. Kneel down, my son. Let me pray for you. And he blessed me. He said, go. 
Go and do what God wants you to do. <laughs> you see how God makes you, this is the strategic way of doing things. It's not what people are doing today. They go in error. When you do things in error, <laughs> it doesn't come with a good result. After somebody calls me and say, sir, do you cause this person? No, I didn't cause you because if you go against scriptural way of doing things, you fall into trouble. You fall into trouble. And then it affects a generation. You create a generational problem for yourself. And then, are, are you seeing the pattern of how things are being done? Are you seeing the pattern? Are you seeing the pattern? Then I go to bless. Now today, I'm blessed by the special grace of God. Why? Because you don't build on, on another man's foundation. I come to realize that. In short, if I have time, the, the particular pastor that did that to me, today even that's one of the pastors that pioneered that. Today he comes to me and say, Pastor, let's pray. Let's pray together. I want you to pray with me. I say, God, how come you make people that are that were against me and now everybody is, they want to come around them. They want to receive the blessings of God. You see what? It is good to follow the pattern of the word of God. It is also good to listen to the elders. Forget the fact that they might be wrong at some point in time, but listen and grow. So when we see evil in the church, we put things in place, possibly maybe in your branches and you see something wrong. Stand on the truth. Don't bend the truth. Don't say, because I want these people to give me money. Who cares? Who cares? Your soul is what is important to us. Your soul is what is important to us. There are very wealthy people that have put a call through to me. Maybe they, <laughs> I think one of the problem is that maybe they think that maybe they are speaking to somebody that will just, uh, they think maybe they were, <laughs> they think maybe when they are speaking to me, I will now begin to like Ben and say, come on, it's okay with you. I'll just begin to, because maybe they have money. No, no, who cares? I tell you, this is the truth. <laughs> Your position, your this, a particular politician called me one time. He's, he's saying he's praying for this, praying for this. I say, see, <laughs> what God needs is sanctification. <laughs> Who cares? I know that if I tell him good, good words, <laughs> come on, he's going to he's going to say, give me your account number and send this or something like that. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> there is a revival. The revival we are after is not um, we are not after. Is the soul? Your soul is what is important to a true preacher. He doesn't care about what you have or what you want to give, but he's looking at your soul. A true pastor guards the sheep. He guards the shepherd from wolves coming in and from other things. He protects them. That's a true shepherd. That's a true apostle. That's one that has a spirit for the people of God. So this is why I try to follow this man here. Because I saw that he even says that he is not bodily with them, but in spirits. There are times I've gone on retreats. I've said, God, what is happening in this place? Tell me, show me. All of a sudden, my eyes will open. I see what is happening. I say, eh, so this is what is happening. Eh, so this, I'm not there. I'm not there. I'm not there. That's why I saw people who say to me and say, Pastor, how, how do you know? Uh, how, how do you know this thing? Uh, it's like you, 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 you always do like a policeman. Somebody has said that to me. You are like a policeman. Every time you are policing all around, <laughs> something like that. No. We are watching over because we know the danger. Immorality can destroy a church. Eh? Immorality can kill a revival. Immorality can, can destroy the people. Immorality will hinder your own prayers. Your own prayer. It will hinder it from going to heaven. Immorality in the church. So, beloved, God is calling us on to holiness. God is calling us on to holiness. Don't be carried away. Don't be moved by what you see. Somebody might pamper the sin to you. Well, God bless the person, but not I. Everything I'm doing, I'm doing it because I'm going to give an account. I want God to say to me, Che Dozier is my servant. He's faithful. He's preached the truth. He stood on the truth. 
He is indeed a soldier of Christ. I want God to say that about me. I don't pray to God to give me all the wealth in the world. I even told God, I don't need some amount of money in this world. That's what I'm looking for. Anything I need nice for the kingdom. I want, I want the kingdom to be expanded. That's my thinking mentality. I'm not thinking of what, what you know. God takes care of that. But now the souls. I want to see that those that we are building. I want to see that those that we are trying to take into heaven. I want to see that they are not being carried away. They are not being taken away by this doctrine and that doctrine and that doctrine and that doctrine. You stay in a place and you grow. That's how to grow. You grow. You grow in the world. When you stay in a place, you grow. But you see, when you begin to eat different kinds of food, it has its own spiritual danger. What it has is that before you know it, you begin to enter into different levels of doctrine. You will not grow because you need to grow. You begin to enter into some kind of errors. I know people that have come to me and say, Sir, what do you, how can you be calling Jesus, Jesus? This person needs to be in holiness. So. <laughs> So I should be calling Jesus only, uh, what is he, Yeshua, something, something. I say. What are you saying? See, you people that are calling Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> you are already in error. I say, <laughs> you are the one that is in error. It's not me. I will call the name of Jesus as long as I live. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Don't deceive me. Because they cannot interpret the scripture. You know why? It all happens like this. That is why it is always good to be orderly. When there is what is called grace, God will give me time. As time goes on, I'll be able to explain a lot of things to us. You see, there is grace for every spiritual activity. When there is no grace for an activity, you enter directly into error. Now, because where would you get the grace? Satan has a way of supplying you with something else. Before you know it, you enter into trouble. For example, God has not called me to ministry. Maybe God called me to be a teacher. I mean teacher, to be teaching pupils so that they can become future leaders. And I say, no, 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 Lord. I love this thing. I love this. Let me enter into this. No problem. You know what? He doesn't mean that it will not move or it will move. But you see what will happen. A point will come. There is no grace because every ministry has to do with spiritual work. If nobody has told you, I'm telling you that now. <laughs> it has to do with spiritual war. A time will come when the spiritual war will increase. Now, because there is no grace, there is no angelic backup, it becomes a problem. Not only the person, every other person suffers from it. I'm speaking based on experience, what we have seen. I'm not just telling you what somebody told me. What I have seen and, you know, there is nothing I can do anymore. The problem has occurred. I can't do anything. All I just do is I just say, God, help this person. Help this person. Just help this person. So let's be very much careful of these things. Of these things. If you want to get married, we have told you that it's a way of doing things. You do things in the right way. You don't come to meet a sister and say, sister, sister, it's you I love. I love you very well. Come, marry me now. Marry me now. No, you don't do that. You don't do that. You say it's God that is leading you. Pass through the process. Pass through the process. When you pass through the process, this will work out. Why do people like to pass through back doors? They pass through back doors because their heart is not right with the Lord. That's why they are passing through back doors. Pass through the normal process. Maybe because they want to taste. They want to taste. Sorry if I, I because... I'm just trying to be seen. They want to have a taste of the sister. That's why they don't want to pass through the process. Pass through the process. Pass through the process and do things the right way. And in the end, the sister will be deceived. And before you know it, they'll be crying. Pass through the normal process. Follow through the church process. The right way of doing things. The right way of doing things. Somebody should come to me and say, Pastor, see, God is calling me to do this and do that. I say, good, wonderful. If you say, God is calling, I bless you. But you don't pass through a back door to do things. Very wrong. It shows that your motive is wrong. 
shows that you are carried away by self. You've not grown. How can a leader that is not matured now be leading other people? Or they all fall into the dungeon. Pass through the process. That's what we say. Understand what the apostle says here. Follow the discipline. Do it with humility. Humble yourself and say, God, I thank you. This that you are doing in my life is because you love me. What about if you die in sin? God disciplines his children because he loves them, not because he hates them. A father that doesn't love his children will leave his children to do what they want to do. But a father that loves is like, oh, I want my children to be better. I want them to be great. I want them to even be better than I am. This is the way of holiness. This is the way that leads to heaven. He said, but now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, be a fornicator, a covetous, or an extortioner, or a reeler, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such one, no, not to eat. Paul, look at Paul. I know if Paul, these are things that Paul must have said, they would have stoned Paul. They would have beaten Paul. They say, Paul, what are you saying? How can you be speaking like this? A a preacher that his message is accepted by everybody is not a genuine man of God. I don't, I don't, don't think I'm looking for acceptance on my page because of I've not even read the inboxes. People have written me a lot of things. They say, pull down this. They, they've told me, pull down your post. Stop writing this. I say, God, why is the when, if I, if I preach love now? I love you all. Love. I love you. Everybody's happy. <laughs> but when I touch sensitive parts. Oh, there's problem everywhere. Everywhere is shaking. Why? Why? Why is it so? The devil doesn't like the truth. The devil hates truth. The devil doesn't like what is good. The devil likes sin. He says that don't be them farewell. I've seen people in the church extort money from other people. I say, please, you know, man of God, he doesn't give me any money. <laughs> now, because these people, they lack wisdom. They are very soulish. They are very carried away. I, told, I, I always say that's on your own account because it has nothing to do with me. If somebody uses my name to get money from you and all that, it has nothing to do with me. If you want to be deceived, I'll leave you alone. I'll leave you to the word of God. And because we don't have the spirit of God, I think, oh, it's true, hey, brother, or oh, sister says, <laughs> there's no money and there's no money and there's no money. People write to me from different places. Don't think I just I just open and say I just give. No, no, no. Uh, that's because a soulish man, a soulish man doesn't understand spiritual things. So he's carried away by emotions. I'm not carried away by emotions. I want to like, God, what do you want me to do? So there are extortioners. It was in the Corinthians church. It will also be in every church. There are people that will pray on your weakness and say, ha, ha, let me see this brother, this sister. Okay, let me let her know of my business and you know, this, 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 that, and send me this and send me. I've dealt with many of these issues. I've dealt with many of these issues. Are you surprised? So you have to be very careful. Follow the word of God. Paul says, such people, he says, such people, how, how did he put it? He said, don't keep company with them. Be careful of them. Don't keep company with them. Don't keep company with them. Don't be friends with people that go against the world. I know the end. I know how it always ends. Because I've seen a story that started like this, ends like this, and before you know it, there's nothing I can do. At that moment, people begin to call my phone. I can't do anything. I say, I can't do anything. This is not me. This is God's judgment. This is God. So the best thing you can do is go to God and ask for mercy. Don't come to me. I don't have any problem. I don't have any problem. My heart is free, but go to God. Go to God. Do the right things. So he says that they are covetous, they are railers, they are drunkards and extortioners. Idolater. Idolatry is not carrying images and statues like I do in those days. No, that's not just, that's a part of idolatry. That's maybe the one that we know. The idolatry is in their hearts. What is in their hearts? You can form an idol in your heart. Ministry can be an idol if you don't know. 
That's why some people put ministry first before Jesus. They don't listen to Jesus, but they just want to do what they want to do. You know, ministry can be an idol if care is not taken. It has happened to me. There are times I'm too busy, so busy, so busy, so busy. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to do things. So busy, very dangerous. What brings about the glory is the relationship. Then you now replace it with ministry. <laughs> I pray God will help us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You put your husband as an idol in your heart. What brought you that husband? What will keep your husband is the spirituality. But you put your husband first there. No problem. If the thing that is helping it is just like what is making your car to move is the fuel. And then you are, you are taking care of the car, but you don't put fuel. How would you drive? You won't drive. The car won't move. Put the things that must be put first in the right proportion, in the right place. And you shall be blessed. Follow suit of the word of God. This Bible you see is not very easy. We need the grace of God. We need the grace of God. You need to study. You need to learn. You need to read. You need to understand some certain things. And you will have a beautiful life. A beautiful life, I say. God will give each and every one of us a wonderful life to live holy. I know it's not easy. And that is why, you see, gone are those days. If somebody comes to me and says, sir, I committed fornication. If you were those days, I say, oh, is something wrong with you? How do you do this? Oh, it's like, I want to bring fire down from heaven. No, I don't do like that today anymore. Not because I love this sin. No. I say, I understand. God bless you. Do you want to do it again? If the person says, I want to do it again, I know you are not serious. Do you want to do it again? No. Do you like what you did? No, I don't like it. Okay, do you want to talk to God about it? Let's pray. And the person is surprised. Yeah, I thought pastor would kill me now. <laughs> but you see, when you are very proud and you don't want to acknowledge that you have sinned, that's where I can come with an apostolic king. And then I, will, I can hit the road. When you are like, uh -huh, what's there? What's there? What's there? Who was there? <laughs> when you don't understand, the, 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 the evil of sin and what it does. If somebody is living in sin in the church, do you know it will affect me? I hope you know. <laughs> it affects me. It affects me. It affects my finances too. It affects you too. That's why the gathering you find yourself very important. If you are in the gathering in a church, where everybody are just living in fornication, sister in the choir, sleep with brother in this thing. A sister came to me and told me, sir, I committed fornication with a choir member. I said, why are you confessing to me? Am I your pastor? Why are you confessing to me? You can imagine what people do nowadays. Do I... <laughs> you just saw me on Facebook. I'm not your pastor. You don't confess that to me. Go to your pastor and go and confess. Your pastor, the person that fits you with the Bible, go to him and go and confess. Do you know that this sister found it hard to go and confess to her pastor, but she's confessing to me. You know why she's confessing to me? How many persons know why she's confessing to me? Let me see. I, I want to get a contribution. How many persons know why she's confessing to me? She doesn't want to confess to her pastor. I want a contribution then. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Are we here? Hallelujah. I said, how many persons know why this sister is confessing to me, not to her pastor? I think I think it's because uh, she, she doesn't know you very well, or you don't know her very well, or you don't attend the same church with him, with her, sorry. Okay. I, I think uh, for my own, I think the other one wanted to know in the church, maybe it would be okay. disgrace for him or mm. for her. Mm, mm. Shame footing for her because maybe they have already told them in church that don't do this, and you know that this thing when you are doing it is a sin. So coming to tell the pastor, think maybe it's a shame, shameful heart. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, I mean, uh, uh, somebody else again. There's a key word here, uh, but we 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 are, we all we all we are all very close to that. There's a key word there. Is, is there anybody that want to say something about that? Again? Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Okay. I think because she cannot see, it, she see that you cannot see her face to face. She cannot see you and you cannot see her. She just see that she's still mm. secret. Why she can speak her mind? <laughs> she cannot see you. You cannot see her face. That evil face that she used to do evil. Mm, mm, okay. 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 Hallelujah. I think to me, I think it is it is easier for you to confess to a stranger that does <laughs> than somebody that is close to you that mm. you that mm. stranger. Mm. You will not mm. always. You just happen to come across him and said, "Okay, this is what I have done." This is I have done. Mm. A pastor, mm. but it is a stranger to you than your mm. pastor that you to see every day. You will have the impression that uh, once you do this, each time you see him, that talk, that confession will be in his mind that this is what you did and this is what you did. Mm. And you have the impression that most probably you are always doing it. You have not stopped doing it. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's good. Uh, Mama's contribution with the experience. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That, um, she's running away from being punished. Mm. She doesn't that, want that's, to be punished. That's the key word there. Yeah. Everybody got it right. You know. Mm. Let me tell you this. And that's the way I behave. I don't I don't think of you giving me. I even sent her credits. I took my phone. I said, don't worry, I'll send you credit. Call this, call your pastor. I asked her, is your pastor doing bad things? Or do your pastor sleep with you too? <laughs> Let me know because this one you're afraid. I sent her. I, I don't waste time. I don't, I'm not, I don't even know, I don't know her, but that's my life. I could send you things. I don't, I don't want to know you, but I want righteousness. I told her, this thing you are doing. Do you know that that choir member now eh, is singing in the church? As he's singing, he's griefing the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not happy. All the prayers in the church, no one will be answered. And the pastor will be struggling and telling, I've experienced that in this church too. I'll be struggling. I'll be str I don't know that somebody is there doing one nonsense. That, that's why I frown at him because I know the danger. And the pastor is struggling. The pastor is struggling. <laughs> he doesn't know why he's struggling. The finances of the church is struggling. Everything is pulling down because somebody is living in sin. You don't want to confess. She's confessing to me because I cannot discipline her. She knows. I can't see you. How am I going to discipline you? I don't have authority over you. I'm not your pastor. It's your pastor that has the authority, the legal backing. I told her, see, I don't have power over you. How do you want me? To? Okay, I even told her, go here and say, she's giving me an excuse. And sir, and I've left this place. I want to leave the church. You don't leave church. You serve your discipline. What is wrong with this generation? Is it that we don't understand things again? You serve your discipline. You do it with all humility. I know of a big general of Asia right now today. He's serving his discipline, even though they're accusing him of immorality in the church. And he's serving his discipline. That's a mature believer. Because we are not taught. Because we don't understand these things. That's how to know a baby Christian. And then when you discipline someone, the first thing the person thinks is, let me leave the church. So that, you know why the person is living? I don't want that discipline. No, it's too much for me. I don't want that discipline. Not knowing that it is the Lord. See, let me tell you, that is what is called spiritual carryover. Anything you don't learn now, someday you still learn it in another way. You see, God is a mighty God. He knows what he's doing. God will do that thing in order to break you. He, want to, he wants to break you. I'm not sure the sister has done the same thing till today. Uh, she's even like, can I be a member of the church? <laughs> member, what are you being a member for? <laughs> you see, I'm after. <laughs> I say you should serve discipline. The one I told you to do, you never do. But you are saying, you are telling me of member. <laughs> see, people create problems for themselves. Why? Because they are not ready to be taught. Paraventure, the girl, the girl will not know that most of the problem she's going through in life is because she has not done the right thing. It will be affecting her spiritually because there is a mark. Satan, Satan will mark her in the spirit world. You see you, you have not done the right thing. This is what we call confession or restitution. It is the right way to go, my beloved. 
But you see somebody that is not mature will say, ah, you people are wicked though. Why now? Show mercy. God is a merciful God. <laughs> so Paul is not merciful yet. It doesn't work that way, my beloved. So I pray that God will give us sound understanding of the scripture. I pray that we will live by the word. We will live by the word. We will live by the word. I even want God to help me because I'm like God. I need, I need the strength, the mantle to put things right. Because I'm also emotional sometimes. But I'm like, the word of God is bigger than this. The word of God is the word of God. So I pray that God will help us. If there are areas that, <clears throat> if there are areas we need to put things right, we put things right. If there are confessions you need to make, don't keep it secret like that. Secret sin will kill. Secret sin destroys. Secret sin will pull down. Secret sin destroys. Let's go to God in prayer. I don't know if there's any question before we go to God in prayer. I have a question. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Uh, uh, I'm only struggling to talk since Monday I've been down. It's only okay. this morning I connected. This question is, uh, I, had, I asked my, uh, my pastor directly that my husband is a retired pastor in Anglican community. And along the line, I didn't, I, I'm not fenced out with, uh, by any denomination. And I've always moved with holiness and, and uh, revival movement. And, and, and I have been blessed by that. And that's how my growth came. But if I, he was fighting me. And yet they were unknown him. So I had to ask the pastor directly. I said, why is it difficult for many of you in Anglican to speak the truth? The answer, I said, you cannot confront the truth. If my husband were to be your father or your elder brother, wouldn't you have sat him down to say these things are not right, to help him to come out of it? And Mama, God will help us. I don't know how you see that. I directly <laughs> confronted the past. I don't know how you see that. A situation okay. where an, an elderly person can be corrected. There's a way you attend to that situation, but you compromise it. You are honoring him, honoring him, and it's growing in that issue. So that's my mm -hmm. question. I directly well, confronted our pastor. Well, that's the irony of life. You know, a bad fruit cannot be a good fruit, no matter how well you do it. Some people till today used to tell me, oh, go back to the Catholic church in those days. And then so that God will use you, you will change this. You, I, I'm not changing anything. I can't even change the system. The system is bigger than me. <laughs> so you must tell yourself the truth to understand systems that are bigger than you. There are things we cannot change. Something has been there for over thousand of years now what am i going to do you think i can change it i can't change anything i just do my only two parts and someday if i die i leave the world and i've done my part you know it's the same thing also you know a bad fruit cannot be a, or a bad tree cannot be a good fruit so what we only pray for is that your husband will encounter the truth and the simple truth about it is that who knows we don't know the pastor but you can't give what you don't have. That's just the simple truth. Do you know that if somebody is living in fornication, it will be hard for him to preach about fornication. I hope you know. <laughs> That's the simple truth. If somebody is stealing money, it will be hard for him to preach about don't steal money because the team will be judging him. So if you have not gotten to a level spiritually, it's hard. It's very hard. Except the person, <clears throat> except the person has a dead conscience to be preaching the right thing and be doing the wrong thing, you know. So the only thing we pray for is that he will encounter, you know, the truth, you know. I know that in the agriculture, there are some little sects that, you know, like the FR can, you know, because I've had friends, you know, and all that that still stand on this thing. But the thing is that the foundation 
is not still pure. But there are still so many things. The level of spirituality, you know, is still down. So the yes. best thing to come out from among them, you know, and be a separate, come out from among them. So our prayer is that he will encounter the truth in, I don't know how God will do it, but maybe God will use something or somebody to preach to him and he will know the truth. If not, there are even people that will even be advising. <laughs> You've not seen pastors whereby, and then you talk of a particular thing and they even tell you, what's there now? Continue, continue doing the fornication. What's there? Forget about that thing, John. Forget about it. Continue, continue living in adultery. Okay, we do it now. <laughs> I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if I, I hope my style is clear, so God will give you the grace. God will help you, ma. Uh, I think we, we, we just go to God in prayer. We just bow down our heads, go to God in prayer. There's no question. Uh, let's remember tonight is, is deliverance night. And um, let's invite our friends and our family. Today is combined service. So I think I'll have it with the headquarters too. Um, God willing, but by God's grace. So let's be there and let's invite friends and family. I tell you, today is going to begin by 12. <clears throat> We're going to begin quite early, you know. And remember, it's the last, it's the last Friday of the month. So we need to collect the, the dime minute blessing. How am I going to put it? There are blessings that God wants to give to us. We need to collect those blessings by fire, by force. And we're going to collect them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, okay. Let's go to God in prayer. Uh, wherever you are, begin to talk to God. Wherever you are, begin to talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord, I am here before your presence. Help me. Father, is there any way that I have not gotten it right? Is there anything that I'm doing that the Holy Spirit is ministering to my heart that this is not the right thing? This is not the right thing. This is not the right thing to do, Lord. Is there anything the Holy Spirit is saying? You need to talk to pastor about this. You need to talk to somebody about this. Why are you keeping that? That's not the right thing. Is there anything that is not the way it is supposed to be? Wherever you are, begin to talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord, I need the grace. I want to be discipled to heaven. I want to follow the pattern the pattern that the apostles have laid down for us. I want to follow that pattern. The pattern of righteousness and the pattern of holiness. I want to be true with the end time message. The message that takes us to heaven. Not the message of fear, but the message is the fullness of God's standard. Not deducing the standard. Father, help my soul. Father, give me your grace. Father, keep me in your presence in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, help me, Lord, not to be taken by the wayside. I tell you, many will be taken by the wayside. <laughs> I've seen that happen several times. Many will be taken by the wayside. But all I'm bothered about is that, God, let this one soul not be lost. Father, Lord, come and help us that the souls of your children will not be lost at the end of their race here on the earth. Father, have your way, Father. Give us exceeding grace to shun all form of immorality because it kills, it destroys, it pulls down. Many have lost their ministries. Many have lost their anointing. Many have lost their calling because of immorality. Look at what happened to Brother Samson. He didn't regain back himself. He didn't regain back himself. It only takes God's grace. Father, Lord God Almighty, help us. Help us not to play with what you've given to us, Father. Father, give us the grace to abide by scriptural precepts and scriptural guidelines, Lord. Father, help us, Lord. Help us to be at orderly, O oh Lord, in 
in an apostolic ministry like this. Oh Lord, help us to understand how to how to work with the move of God in an apostolic ministry. But this is not just a pastoral church. This is an apostolic ministry. Father, Lord God Almighty, help us, Lord, to magnify our ministries and to be effective in the calling that you have for us there. Father, give us the grace, Lord. Keep us, keep us strong. Keep us strong. Father, it is my desire that your children will not be carried thus and through, but they will understand the message of sanctification, the message of holiness. They will understand it will be without no hypocrisy. Lord God Almighty, help them. I've seen my friends fall by the wayside. I've seen people fall by the wayside, Lord. I've seen people live out of this message and preach other doctrines. I've seen members taken away by the flow, the flow that comes in every ministry. I've seen people dry up. Lord, keep this one strong. Help them to understand the spirituality of where they have found themselves in, the angelicals that abide in these places. Father, give them understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, help your children to be strong. Like Paul said, I know when I go away, the wolves will come. I know. But you see, as long as I'm alive, oh Lord, help me, Lord, to stay strong and to shield the people from the wolves. But I know when I will go away, I can't stop the wolves. But I know that the Lord God Almighty keeps his children strong. Keep your children strong in this generation for the generational revival that is about to take place. Father, keep them strong. Keep them strong. Help them to grow. Jesus said that they might be one as we are one. Help them, O oh Lord God Almighty. Keep your children strong. Keep us strong. No matter the tribulation we face, no matter the persecutions, the trials we face, all these things will come our way. It only adds to our stars and our crowns in heaven. Someday we shall get to heaven, Father. And we see that everything we went through in life, in ministry, it's all to the glory of God. There will be so much of pearls and stars on our crown. And then we'll be in a glorious city and saying, glory to God. And I can talk to Paul and I can talk to Peter. I say, Paul. And Paul said, ah, Pastor Jesus, did you see Demas left me while I was on earth? I said, yes, it happened to me in ministry. So I felt all those things. And, and they can say, oh, uh, Shela, do you see? It happened to me. And she, uh, he says, it happened to me. And Paul, too. And Paul, and Paul the apostle, it happened to me. And, and Paul says, Derrica, do you see what's happening here? And Derrica says, I experienced that, Paul. I experienced that, Paul. What are your experiences? <laughs> Father, we want to have those experiences that Paul, the great apostle, had. We want to have the experiences that Peter Bartholomew and Matthew and Luke, all these experiences, and Stephen was martyred for the kingdom's sake. Some of us will get to heaven and we want to say, Stephen, I was also martyred like you are. And Stephen say, yes, yes, it happened to me. See, look at me now, I'm in heaven, I'm enjoying in heaven now. Father, I want this to be our story. I want this to happen to all of us here too. I want us to have experiences, Lord, knowing that the trial of our faith it worked out something. It worked out patience. It worked out hope. And it worked out something great in our life. Father, do your work. How the saints are going out of the earth. How those that have preached the gospel of life. Brother Ravi has gone out of the earth today. And many other people have gone out of the earth like him. And they have preached Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, but I know they suffered so much on the earth. Oh, Lord. We are not saying that you take the sufferings away from our life because there is a beauty in suffering. We are saying, give us the grace, Father. Give your children the grace. In their marriage, give them the grace. Personal life, give them the grace. All the battles Satan are throwing all around, give us the grace to stand strong. But I'm praying for all the ministers of God all over the earth. I know it's not easy, Father. All the pastors all over the earth, oh Lord, the ones that are in error, they are not in error. All I know is that help them, bless them, keep them strong. Let them stand firm. 
Because anybody that has tasted of this gospel is being attacked by Satan himself. Oh, Lord God Almighty, help your children. That's what I pray today, Lord. Give us the grace we need. We need grace. We need grace. There are temptations everywhere all over the world. We need your grace, Lord, to stand firm. We want to leave this earth. And you say, welcome, my faithful servant. Welcome. I want to leave this earth. And, and then you say to me, look at, I gave you rapture at the end time movement. How well did you keep the church clean? And I want to have a good score mark before you, Father. I don't want to have a good score mark before the people. They don't need to give me a good score mark. I'm not impressed by that, Father. But I'm impressed by the score mark that comes from the Father. That's what I want, Father. And I know that's what they also want. They want a good score mark from you, Father. Do it in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus. Help us all to enter into the life of spirituality. There is a realm of spirituality, Father, we want to enter into. The realm of spirituality is the realm of eternal life. Where we walk with Jesus in love. And we walk with Jesus in peace. And we follow peace with all men. Father, do this in our life. For the glory that is waiting for us is so great. There's a glory. Father, do this for us, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. There could be some of them right now struggling with something and doing something that is wrong and they have heard the message. Father, do not let them to take offenses in the messages because it is the devil that puts offenses in the people of God when the word of God is being preached. I did not preach any other thing but the word. Oh Lord, help them to look at their lives with the word and say, come on, is this thing equated with my life? And then let them be better in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, in all the trials, it could be financially, there could be a struggle there. Father, help your children. Help them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let them live this life to the fullest, to do what God desires of them, to live a life without hypocrisy. For the Bible says the hypocrites, the abominable things, the idolaters, the mothers, the immorals, such as this will not enter into the kingdom of God. Father, I know you are not joking. I know you are saying the truth because I come to believe your word. Your word is truth. Help them, Lord. Help us, Lord, on this earth. As we run this race, help us to run it to get the crown of it and our life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to run the race. Help us to run the race. Help us to run the race. Till the end. And to get the golden crown. I want to see all of them in heaven. I want to also be in heaven. I want to be able to visit them in their mansions. Wherever they have found themselves. Because the saints are going out soon. The world is going to go through too much of problems. But Father, keep them strong even in the problems that is coming upon the earth soon. Keep them strong. Keep them strong. Soon many of them will be persecuted. <laughs> but keep them strong. Don't let them look back. Keep them strong in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, help us, Lord. We thank you for the word that you've given to us. It is a great privilege. Father, your servants, and a true servant and a true shepherd is a blessing to a people or to the people. But a wayward servant is a curse to the people. A wayward leader is a curse to the people. You send curses to nations through their president. You send curses to nations. Show our nation, Nigeria, and all other nations. Show us mercy, Father. A bad leader is a punishment to the people. But a great leader is always a blessing. Father, bless our soul in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we keep on hearing this message of sanctification, use it to build them. Help them to grow, Lord. Help them to grow, Lord. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we pray, Lord, for our brethren, those that might not be here with us, Lord. Wherever that they may be, bless them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep them strong in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For those making mistakes, help them, Lord. Help them so that tomorrow they don't say, 
And I know, why did I do this and why did I do that? I don't want people to keep making mistakes. Oh Lord God Almighty, help us to learn from the Master Jesus, who is our forerunner in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Someday, when we leave this earth, the Lord shall say to each and every one of us, welcome my faithful servant. You have been faithful on the earth. Come, come into heaven now and come and rest from all the troubles of the earth. It will be so in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Hand over to the coordinator. Praise the Lord.